Well, hello and welcome to Creativity and Multicultural Communication, a MOOC. We are brought to you by the State University of New York's Empire State College Center for Distance Learning, or SUNY ESC CDL. In I am Carol Yeager, a well-aged lifelong learner and one of the soldier facilitators for this particular learning journey. And now I would like to introduce you to Betty Hara Das Gupta. I'm, um, I'm Betty Hurley Das Gupta. I uh, was uh, Betty Lawrence. I got married uh, in July. And right now I'm the interim associate dean at uh, the Center for Distance Learning of Empire State College. And uh, but my main role and the role I I hold to is one of, of mentor, um, which uh, we all hold at Empire State College. And I must say I am thrilled to be part of this um, MOOC on creativity and multicultural communication. Um, I've taken a long voyage to um, this moment and uh, have put in some blog entries um, about that and will continue to. Um, I look forward to this journey uh, with all of you. Some of you may be asking why MOOC, um, uh, just some of you, because uh, we've uh, seen in the group that there are some people uh, who've registered who have been in a number of MOOCs um, in the past, and some of you who are very new to a MOOC. Um, so as Carol had said, a MOOC is a massive open online course, and we decided to um, use a quote from our president, Alan Davis, uh, who um, announced this MOOC in a press release uh, from Empire State College. And uh, he talks about MOOCs as an example of open learning at its best, which is uh, very important to us at Empire State College because we have now been named the Open University of New York. And as he says, it is a process of networking and making connections with others. Um, and Carol will talk a bit later about this not being very linear and being very dependent on networking and uh, the conversations we'll be having with each other. Um, and especially with this topic, we think there is great potential for a greater knowledge and understanding in all of us who participate in the MOOC in any of uh, the many ways that we are going to. Okay, so now it's back to me for a quick overview of where you are and where you might be going on this journey. I know a number of you are a little confused at the moment, and that's okay. You're in good shape if you're confused. First, I need to explain that this is not a linear journey, or a course in the traditional sense. It's going to take some time to get used to it, and not to worry, that's fine. This is normal. Just jump in and try to get a sense of where you want to go. There's a very large menu of things happening, shifting, depending upon you and the rest of the folks. You are in charge of your own learning experience, and that is to say, your personal learning network knowledge. And in week three, George Siemens will just be discussing this with you. In this process, you'll be acquiring, building, and shifting your perceptions by way of connectivist processes. And Stephen Downs will be chatting with you about connectivism and the permutations next week in week two. Now, at this point, I would like to mention that both Steve Downs and um, George Siemens are the father of MOOCs, and Dave Cormier gets thrown in there as well. And they have a MOOC that started Monday uh, called Change 11. Uh, somewhere along the line, I made a plug for it in one of my blog entries or an announcement, so you'll see it somewhere online in the course. In time, many of your questions are going to be answered, and more of them will take their place. So just relax, enjoy the journey, play with the process, and have fun. You have no obligations to do anything you don't want to, with the exception of those few students who are taking this for Empire State College credit, you do have a few obligations. And so, 
these are a few areas that you might wish to explore and maybe even contribute to thoughts, your ideas, and to the connectivist endeavor of learning. Under participation, we have Read the New Post. New Post is our daily newsletter, which we're having a few little technical issues, so it's not going out on a daily basis. However, you can see them by clicking on the um, daily, the New Post journal and the course itself in the sidebar on the left-hand side. The New Post archives will show you previous issues as a little chart with the dates. Just click on the date, and it will pop up the earlier New Posts. Uh, thank you, Sam. Add a new feed. If you have new um, RSS feeds, blogs, tweets, uh, Twitter rather, Flickr, anything that has an RSS feed, add it there. That will be harvested and uh, published back out again. You can look at a list of the feeds, which will show you who has blogs, who has uh, Twitter, and so forth and so on. Read the discussions. They change from day to day. Browse the blog posts. And do us a favor, and if you can, start your own blog and start blogging yourself. This may not be something you're fond of doing, but it becomes kind of a nice habit for reflection of what you're seeing, doing, experiencing, and um, learning. And the recording as today will be, uh, the session rather, as today will be recorded, and you can go back into the archives to see the recordings as soon as this is finished. We'll ask everybody to leave the room so that we can end the recording, and then it will be archived, and within a day it should be posted online, if not sooner. OK. Now, we don't want you to leave, with, leave you without any lifeline at all. And Rhett Sanzang has stepped forward to assist you with your technical issues and gently guide you to a better understanding of the navigation process. He's even added a help desk on there. He's been my lifeline, and he certainly has rescued me from the errors of my technical ways many times just in the development of this MOOC. So Sam, please help us understand the big picture and help us with some of the technical details for successful engagement with the journey. OK. Hello, everybody. And thank you, Carol, for giving me this opportunity to share what I've got and what I've learned. All right. Um, before I go, I would like to introduce myself briefly. My name is Sam Zhang, or you can just call me Sam for short. I'm I'm from China, and I've been in China all my life by now. I uh, have a computer background and art talent, and currently I'm teaching English online. And wait a second. I hear some echo. Would Sue, would you like to turn down to? Oh, thank you. That's very helpful. Um, let's continue. Uh, actually, while I was helping Carol to uh, overcome some of the issues with um, the the CMC 11 website setup, uh, I was actually learning and trying to figure out what's going on and what the actually the big picture is so that uh, I can know what to do to maintain this website and maintain this course and how to help and after that I created this um, diagram so that um, it, it can help me and others to be less confusing. And at this moment, I would like to draw your attention to this participant on the right-hand side. It represents uh, some typical uh, participant that um, how does he connect to this MOOC, CM, uh, CMC 11 course. And this yellow area represents the whole course, including the CMC 11 website and this live session. This is where you are at the moment. And some of the channels on Facebook, uh, Google Groups, or LinkedIn Groups, etc. Okay, And these are the three main area for interaction. You see these red arrows back and forth, meaning that you would 
be able to choose to interact with this um, areas okay and another thing is very important is this green arrow for you to reflect your thoughts ideas or learning experience through your block and by that your block would produce the RSS feed and CMC 11 site and exactly it would be the grasshopper would harvest your feed and collect your block post into our database and it, and it will show your block post to all of other participants and it will also send newsletters which is called new posts uh, every other day or every a few days okay another thing is you would have some access to some learning materials from the CMC website okay that's another input okay and on the left hand side you can see other participants they may be be connecting to this MMOC course in different ways but somehow they are connected so through this course you are able to connect to all of them and something I didn't draw on this uh, diagram is the internet cloud because it actually through this course would lead us to the internet very often so every link every uh, let's say uh, articles will be out in the internet right so that's all for this diagram okay and here's the next slide which is very important for getting you started with uh, this course that is to add your RSS feed okay and here's the link where you can add your RSS feed Actually, I'm going to post the link in the chat box. Okay. But before you add your feed, you need to register and log on the site. Okay. Okay, here's the link. And in this form, it's very easy. Just uh, type in your blog title, RSS feed URL, or and block URL, a brief description. Okay. Actually, I prepared an example so y you can understand it better. Let me try to paste this. Okay. Oops. Oops. Oh, the URL is not showing up. I'm going to just paste the words in chat box area okay you can see the example what information are required to fill in this form okay actually if you are having trouble finding your RSS feed it's okay because I've tried to just type in fields block URL into both URL field and Grasshopper is getting more intelligent it would actually search your RSS feed alright so actually it's very simple alright uh, about the back channels it's actually uh, an idea that I came up with maybe um uh, because i noticed that carol began to set up a few groups on linkedin and on google groups etc so i thought it would be a great idea to organize all those um groups on or i would say channels together and it would be even better if we allow other participants to create their own channels and add to this list okay and some of the suggestions are you can you can be talking about different topics or um, subtopics which is related to our work okay and it's another way to keep our 
um, CMC 11 site more focus on something or focus on your re reflection of all those activities or discussion. Okay. All right, that's all from me. Thank you, Carol. Back at you. Thank you so much, Sam. Um, one of the things I did want to mention is that there are a number of people who are taking um, this course for credit. And what I'd like to do is ask those of you who are listening or who will view this recording later, if you have not heard from me, please do me a favor and send me an email to carol.yeager at esc.edu. I believe I have everybody, but I'm not quite sure. And please put CMC 11 in the subject line. Um, those who are taking it for credit, um, we will gather at some point and I'll be in contact with you for that. Now you cannot really click on the live links that exist in the slides in this program, but they will be going into a slide share afterwards. And these links, as they are underlined, will be live in the slide share. So I just wanted to point that out. Okay. What I want to do is um, well actually let me go just go back for one second. I do have another note. While the links are not live in the presentation, they will be live in the slide share and we'll post for your access later. Also, um, I was going to try to add some URLs in the chat box as others were speaking, but I'm not as uh, digitally dexterous as some of my colleagues are, so I'm afraid I will not be able to do that. But it does bring me to a side note regarding saving links and picking up links off of the chat box. Um, if you open a Digo or Delicious account to save your links for easy access, it's more than helpful. I found it to be a necessity. I have a Digo account and they're free. And once you open yours, you'll have your very own library of resources. Additionally, if you tag them with the hashtag CMC11 tag, they can be shared throughout all of the um, CMC11 participants. So check it out, see how it works, and I, I find it just absolutely indispensable using Digo. I tried Delicious way, way back and really didn't get the hang of it, but Digo for me seems to be a lot easier to use. Okay, so now a quick dip into creativity and learning. And I'm not going to talk a lot about this because we have a lot of folks who will be talking about it. We'll be talking about the theory, the deliberate process of deliberate creative problem solving, how it works with education, how it works with learning, how it works with life, and then you'll hear from some folks who are applying the deliberate, excuse me, the deliberate process as well as just being creative themselves. So the first thing is what is creativity? There are many definitions. Basically, this is pretty much of uh, an overview of what creativity is, the ability to transcend, transcend additional ideas, rules, patterns, relationships, or the like, and to create meaningful new ideas, forms, methods, interpretations, and so on, originality, progressiveness, or imagination. Creativity takes courage. Now, to sum it all up, creativity is Creating something new and useful. That's really what it boils down to. Something new, something useful. Creativity and learning. This is sort of a, there, there are two things that I have found that have become mantras, mottos in my life. One I've already put into my blog, and that is if you want, it's an old African proverb. If you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. And that's what I find in the MOOC. You really go far with this connectivist uh, pro uh, process. And way back when, when of course I was a wee child in the 70s, Alvin Toffler wrote a book called Future Shock. And one of the things in that particular book that struck me then and has stayed with me forever is the illiterates of the 21st century will not be those who cannot read and write. It will be those who cannot learn, unlearn, and relearn. And when I think of the prescience in that statement, that was the very beginning of computers. Who would have known that we would have gone as far as we have today with the um, potential that is out there with computers and learning 
and unlearning and relearning. And I'm a perfect example of you can teach an old dog new tricks. Uh, it just takes a desire, patience, and a good connectedness network. So how do we build a community of global learners for the purpose of connecting and engaging people in connectedness lifelong learning? Creativity and creative problem solving are the building blocks for sustaining lifelong learning and having fun in the process. And for me, that's one of the keys, is to have fun learning. Too often, uh, we find learning to be sort of a, a, a difficult but not happy task. But if we can find the fun in it, if we own what we're learning, and don't have to memorize and regurgitate, but can actually live it and apply it. I think that's one of the biggest keys to lifelong learning. And creativity and creative problem solving are the building blocks for that. So hopefully in CMC 11, you'll all find some fun, learning, exchanging information, and building on one another's ideas. And now, I believe we're going back to Betty. Hello again. Uh, I've been enjoying the the, the uh, chat, and I, I think uh, part of what I'm um, uh, saying for this slide is already happening. Um, as uh, Carol and I were talking about um, um, the title for this um, MOOC, uh, Creativity and Multicultural Communication, um, and I was doing some reading, I, I realized that um, there's uh, many different words um, in the literature. And um, I had a conversation actually with my, my new husband who's written an article on um, interculturalism that is in your list of readings for the orientation. Uh, and I uh, wanted to talk about it a, a little bit because one of the things that I saw in readings is that um, some, um, in some of the readings, multiculturalism is, is viewed as more um, static and interculturalism is viewed as a more dynamic um, aspect of communication. And um, did want to say that that, that was not uh, what we were thinking of when we did this uh, title. Um, Rather, um, I, I guess in terms of the title, I was looking at it more in a, um, a mathematical viewpoint, which is my background is mathematics. And just looking at multicultural in terms of multi meaning many, um, so many different cultures. And um, when Carol and I discussed and worked on the title and the topic for this MOOC, um, she uh, came with um, her expertise in terms of creativity through her uh, master's in creativity studies. And um, but the, the multicultural came about because in the MOOC what we have is the, the, the wonderful situation of um, many uh, people from around the world uh, rep certainly representing different cultures. And so as we discuss creativity, it's a, an environment in, uh, that is, by its very nature, a multicultural environment. Um, and so that is um, why we came up with uh, this, this title. And um, I um, put to the slide um, in uh, a quote, a definition of culture from Milton Bennett, who is the founder of the Intercultural Communication Institute and, and uh, wrote a book in 1998 on uh, intercultural communication. And I thought I put it in because I think it's um, a, 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 a great description of what I um, uh, fully expect to see happen in this MOOC. And that is le the learned and shared values, beliefs, and behaviors of a group of interacting people. So that uh, we certainly will be interacting a lot over these next uh, 13 weeks in our journey together, uh, 15 weeks for the enrolled students. And um, we also will certainly be learning from each other and sharing many things with each other. I guess it's back to me. What's next? We have two of um, the upcoming presenters, and maybe even three. So certainly Sylvia is here, but she may not be speaking. Um, to get you started on some interactive learning projects. What we've tried to do in the various weeks, as I said before, 
is give you a variety of theories, um, applications, implementations, processes. And two of the presenters have already decided to do some interactive work. So you have the unique opportunity to be a part of their presentation and also to help them determine what you would like to learn and what direction it's going to take. So for the first one, and I hope he's doing okay, he's been having some, um, shall we say, program issues with Illuminate and his computer, but I'm passing the torch to Glenn. Glenn Gatton, the torch is yours now. Thanks, Carol. I'm, uh, yes, I'm having a little bit of issue with Illuminate. My, my screen kind of fractures up, so it's, it's almost a psychedelic experience here, which has uh, added another layer of enjoyment to the whole process. So, yes, uh, my name is Glenn Gatton. I live in Canada, Manitoba, Canada. I've been involved with MOOCs for, well, since there was such a thing, maybe even before that, with uh, um, Alec Kuros. The University of Regina, who initiated uh, sort of a, a pre moot pre model, and he opened up a university course that he was uh, teaching on social media for educators, and a number of us from around the country participated in that, and it was a, it was a very uh, uh, inspiring and, and, and uh, engaging method of, of learning things together as a group. So I've been sort of in, involved in an interest in MOOCs, similar MOOCs ever since, and. Uh, with various levels of participation, and of course, that's one of the features of a MOOC is that you can uh, you can uh, engage to whatever extent you like. You can lurk if you want, just watch what's going on and listen to the recordings, and uh, maybe engage a little bit on the on the uh, text or dialogues, whatever whatever level you're interested in, or you can jump right in and, and take over a, uh, one of the back channels and, uh, and and sort of make it your own and, and use it as a project. And that's what I sort of did in, uh, for the most part in uh, the MOOCs that I joined. I have an interest in Second Life or immersive environments. So I've always tried to um, make sure that I host a um, virtual meeting room for, for a group of people that are engaged in the MOOC who, who would like to try out uh, a virtual online and virtual environment to meet and discuss the various uh, MOOC topics. And, and we've had some fun of those. They, they work out pretty well. So I've been uh, in uh, uh, and offering that for this particular MOOC as well. So, one of the things that I'm doing right now, I'm preparing for a, a keynote address in the University of Guadalajara on uh, online immersive environments for education, higher education in particular, looking at theory and practice. So, what I've done is opened up a concept map, and uh, this is the concept map that I'm using to uh, prepare my keynote address. And I've uh, posted it on the, the um, CMC 11 blog, and I'm inviting people to to uh, have a chance to experience the the co-creation of knowledge, and that's one of the values of the MOOC is that this is something that people work on together. So I would invite participation in this uh, in this concept map. It's fairly simple. It's it's kind of a fun uh, tool if you haven't used online um, collaborative concept maps. It can be a very powerful tool for both synchronous and asynchronous engagement and involvement. And you can uh, develop a lot of information, a lot of material in a big hurry. And uh, it's kind of an interesting thing where we talk about the importance of uh, moving away from strict uh, reliance on uh, linear text-based uh, presentations of knowledge or, or representations of knowledge. And this is one of the ways that, uh, that I find particularly useful for, for working on that. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I um, teach in, in uh, Canada. I teach for for a few institutions. I teach online for North Central University as a mentor in their e-learning program and uh, supervising doctoral programs, doctoral research programs there, where many of the students I work with are, are, are I, guess, I still call them students, I guess, at that point, but they're doctoral candidates looking at uh, different aspects of e-learning and um, theory, theory and practice, of course. So, and then I teach in Canada for a university, Brandon University, uh, where mostly I've taught in the last while for um, First Nations or Aboriginal teacher education programs and uh, teaching them courses in information technology and particularly social media for use in, uh, in, uh, in uh, teaching and learning. So that's sort of my cross-cultural connection and my cultural connection in this regard, uh, representing the, the Great White North. <laughs> 
and hopefully uh, uh, giving a little bit of uh, insight into some of the issues that are important when, uh, when uh, in the preparation of First Nations teachers and, and uh, respecting First Nations cultures in Canada. So that's my little bit. I, I was, I'm going to try and share a page here, so I'm not sure how this is going to work because I said my, my, uh, my Illuminate platform is a little uh, flaky, but I'm going to try and share it and see if you can see my desktop. Did I lose you? Hopefully my my web page is turning up. You'll see my desktop in a minute. Yeah, okay, well, I'm, I'm not sure if you're seeing this, and I, I won't uh, sit and wait while a, a page loads here, but I'll just uh, end my little uh, introduction to, to say I'm, I'm very pleased to be uh, connected to people in this, and hopefully we'll develop some uh, network relationships that uh, go on forever, as I've done with a number of other people that I see in the group here, Carolyn in, in, in particular. So, we will... Uh, Good. Good. Hello? Can you also introduce the slide? We have the URL. Yes, that's what I was hoping to do here to uh, to uh, share my web page here, my desktop. Well, I don't. Is it loading for you? I don't. I don't see. That. I think it eliminates conspiring against me here for some reason. So, yeah, I think uh, it's not going to work. So I'm going to stop the, the if I can stop the web tour. And I'll have to direct you to the the blog, the CMC 11 blog, and the activity eight. If you look at the activity eight, I've posted links there to um, the space in Second Life that I have set aside for uh, groups that are interested in exploring online virtual environments as a part of this as part of this MOOC. If you want to check out what it might be like to use Second Life as part of your personal learning environment, I would certainly invite you to. Uh, to explore that. So I'm sorry, I, I'm unable to post the right, um, if, if you can just give it another 10 seconds and try to see if it'll come up on the slide page. I'm going to try it again then. Then if it doesn't work, then. OK. Nothing so far. No, sorry, sorry about that. All right, thanks. Back to Thank you very much. Mm, let's see, where are we now? Okay, now I believe it's up to uh, Sam. I think you going to speak for, for both you and Sylvia Perpery. Phil, you can type in the chat box if you would like. Um, they are working on a project on global communication. Sam, as he mentioned already, teaches uh, English as a second language in China. And uh, Sylvia teaches English as a second language in Italy. And she also is working as a TA with uh, language with Empire State College and uh, in the Italian language. So it's been a nice, a nice uh, integration. So, so take it, take it away, Sam. Take it away, Sam. Okay. Yes. Um, thank you, Carol. I was speaking with Sue on Skype, and uh, she's not convenient to speak right now. So I will take the chance to speak and introduce a bit about week nine, which is about global communication. Sylvia and I are, are going to facilitate this week, and the topic would be global communication because um, both of us are language teachers, and English is our second language. So 
we are spending so much time on learning um, how to develop new uh, techniques or ways to teach somebody a new language. And um, also, it's uh, global communication is a new topic for both of us. So currently, we are very open for any uh, suggestions, ideas, thoughts. And so uh, when we were discussing, we decided to create a channel on linking. So this is our group on linking. I'm going to post the link. And I think Elias has joined us. And I already saw some of the posts on our linking groups. That is pretty amazing. Another thing that is created by Phil is uh, a wall ratio. Yeah, you see this yellow areas? That is a wall ratio. So everybody feel free to post a sticky note on it and share some of your thoughts about um, global communication and what are the main challenges of global communication. Okay. I think that's all for now. And oh, one thing I would like to mention is back at that big picture, it's just a simplified version of the model, and it's actually very flexible. You decide what to do and how you would like to contribute to that uh, big picture, how you would like to change it into a better way, a better version. And um, yeah, that's it. So that's all for now. Thank you, Carol. Thank you very Thank you much, Sam. And as Sam mentioned, going back to the big picture, that reminds me, um, many folks are not aware that if you scroll down, there is a global map there. I believe seven people have discovered it. Uh, not seven people. Maybe 20 people have discovered it, and we have seven flags up. It would be really great if you scroll down and look at it. It doesn't give your exact location, just the country, so uh, privacy has been guarded there. But it would be really great to see all those flags appearing around the globe. That's kind of fun. I think right now the United States, of course, is in the lead with, China, uh, with uh, Canada following close behind with, I think, three or four people, and then China. And then we have one each from a number of other countries. Um, I believe there's one from Turkey, Denmark. Anyway, can't remember all of them. Go take a look and uh, put us all on the map. Put yourself on the map. That would be great. Okay, now we come to that big session. Any questions? Now I know some of you have been working in the chat box with questions. I haven't been able to watch and talk at the same time. As I mentioned earlier, however, Sam did uh, put in a help desk. Now, primarily the help desk is for technical issues. And as I said before, Tam has been, Sam has been terrific in, in helping to work out some of the technical challenges. What we've done basically, and if you go back to the big picture, you'll see there are really two templates that are being used. One is, is uh, WordPress, and the other is Grasshopper, which is an RSS feed that Stephen Downs, it's open code. Um, anybody can use it, but not anybody can use it. I was completely intimidated by it, and Sam has just made it his business to learn not only how it works, but how to adapt it as, you, as he possibly can. So we're really trying to marry two platforms into one to make your experience as good as possible, as best we possibly can. There are some glitches as we go along. And uh, it's a work in progress. Progress. We are a work in progress. Life is a work in progress. You will see, um, generally after a week has gone, I will not post additional materials. But as we research and find more materials that are pertinent as background in each week, I'll be putting more stuff in there. Um, not everything that goes in there is something you'll agree with, and that's fine. Some of the things the presenters may not agree with, but it gets you thinking. So keep that in mind when you have questions. The questions that mostly can be helped in the tech in the help desk are technical questions. The rest of them, I think, um, we're all here to help answer questions, expand the questions, and find new questions to ask. So 
If anybody has any burning questions at the moment, if you would go to the chat box, um, and if somebody would point out to me, or if anybody else, Betty, Sam, or Glenn, have picked up on any questions that we need to answer right away, that would be terrific. Um, otherwise, I'm going to say thank you for joining us in this exciting new learning journey for all of us. And I hope to see you online. And I hope to find out that you might be lurking about from time to time. And if you are lurking, that's fine too. Just say hello to let us know how you're doing once in a while. And is there anything anybody has to say? If so, raise your hand and I will give you the microphone or you can take the microphone. I'm going to go off right now. Sam has something to say. Thank you. Sam, did you want to say something? I, I, I'm not sure what the one needs. I had his hand up earlier um, before he spoke, so I, that may be all. Are there um, any other questions or, or comments? Oh, okay. Just a few words. Uh, because Eulis was raising a question about, uh, she's worrying about the looping, looping uh, harvesting. In, uh, she said someone's put in a tag um, in her proposed and then he collected into her library and then he she would share the library again and sh so she was worrying about uh, grasshopper would um, collect the feed again and again so um, my answer response would be like uh, let's do a text and see how it works because grasshopper is not something I created and I'm still learning, but it would be great, yeah, if we do some tests to figure out how 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 it works, okay. And if you have any other questions, please go to the help desk because in that forum, um, everybody would benefit from your questions, right? Okay, thank you. That's all. Thank you, Patty and Carol, Glenn, Sue. Question from uh, Chrissy about what part of, of CMC 11 is on WordPress. Uh, Carol, do you want to take that or Sam? Actually, the course itself is what's on WordPress. Um, everything that you see um, is pretty much on WordPress. Once you go to add a feed, you're now going, or any of the feed pieces, the new posts, the blogging, anything that is harvested, aggregated, and pushed out again is what is on Grasshopper. It's an RSS feed. Now, Grasshopper can be used as a course or as a platform for a web page as well. But we had started with WordPress because I don't know code. I didn't know code. And WordPress was easier to use. Once we added Grasshopper, it added another dimension to it, and it seems to be more efficient on the RSS feed. Um, so again, it's an experiment. It's a work in progress. So hang with us. Um, the difference is more technical than anything else. And if you have a question about it, please go to the help desk, and I'm sure Sam will explain it in much easier terms than I can. Thank you. Oh, um, let me try to explain that. Uh, actually, the WordPress is just the surface of this uh, website. We tend to, um, let's say, integrate two of them because we thought that uh, WordPress would be easier to maintain and it prov provides a nice-looking preference. Yeah. Not the WordPress.org, just the WordPress program that you can install on your own server. Okay. And yeah, as Carol said, other than that, I mean, all those features of like harvesting or um, 
let's say everything you 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 propose from your blog or um, pushing newsletter etc. These are the functions or features from Grasshopper. Okay, does it make sense? Perfect. Thank you, Sam. Betty, do you have any words of wisdom to uh, impart before we uh, have Glenn dance us out with some music? Well, look forward to the the, the music. And this this is a slide on on uh, feedback, uh, please. Too. Um, we're all learning through this together, and uh, any feedback you can give us as we go along would be really appreciated. And I like the questions earlier about uh, collecting some data on uh, a MOOC and how people interact in a MOOC. And um, uh, we've got some uh, with the RSS feeds. We, we've got some very interesting data here, and um, I hope we do move forward on that. Is Glenn is still with us? I guess we're waiting for Glenn. I just Skyped him, and we'll see. If we, yeah, there we go. Thank you. Enjoy the music. Have a great week. See you next week. Thanks, Sam. Nice.